I was thinking about Thanksgiving this week quite a bit. And I was thinking about the sermons that we've given you this month. And you know, I kind of need to apologize. Because they taught us in school, you start with a general topic and you break it down to where it applies to you. You alone. And I kind of did that backwards this month. Remember our first sermon we talked about? We talked about learning to be thankful. Now who were we talking about that? Me? We didn't have that general topic, did we? We started talking right here, right at home. And you know what? That had to be God. Because that goes against everything I've been taught. But we talked about how we need to learn to be thankful. A baby's not thankful, is it? It wants it right now and right here. And they let you know it till they get it. And then we talked about being thankful no matter what we're walking through. No matter what is happening around us. Remembering the importance of who God is and what He has done for me. Be thankful. To be thankful no matter what. Last week we talked about selling out to Jesus. Everything in our lives belongs to Him. Everything. The air I breathe, He provides. The blood running through my veins that keeps my heart ticking comes from God. Everything in our lives belongs to Him. Jacob's been looking for a pickup truck a good year and a half. We've never been able to find. Oh, we found them. They're expensive. Trucks are high dollar. And a friend of mine has a car lot we stopped by and he said, thinking about you. He said, you got one left at home, don't you? I said, yeah. Boy, that's a nice one. I said, gosh, you always tell me that. You tell me that about everything. But do you know there's a sticker price and there's a price they're willing to sell the vehicle for? And there's quite a bit of difference between them sometimes. And I played the trump card, I'll be honest. I said, all my children have bought their first vehicles from you. <laughs> he says, what do I got to do to make it happen? So we gave him a price Jacob could afford, and guess what? He drove the truck home. God's good. He provides for us. You know, people in our lives don't just happen. Friendships don't just happen on their own. God puts people in your lives to help you along the way. Dennis and I have had that conversation several times. Where would we be if I, I knew Cindy before I knew Dennis? Where would we be today if I would have never met Cindy? Where would we be? God puts people in our lives. I had a wise man tell me once, I've never met a stranger. I've never met a stranger. I was always their friends. And sometimes that handshake might lead to something really, really neat. So where do we go next on this idea of thanksgiving? Well, like I said, I was praying this week a little bit, and I thought, you know what? I will magnify God with thanksgiving. I will lift His voice. I will sing praises to Him with thanksgiving. I was down in my study just kind of horsing around and I thought, wait a minute. That's in the Bible. That's, there's a song. I will give thanks to Him always. Psalms chapter 69 Verses 30 through 32, and you'll find that on page 413 if you're using a pew Bible. 
It says here, I will praise God's name in song and glorify Him with thanksgiving. This will, doesn't say maybe, doesn't say might, it says this will please the Lord more than an ox more than a bull with its horns and hoofs. The poor will see and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts live. I will praise God in song and glorify Him. What did we do earlier? Just a little bit ago. What did we do here in church? We praised His name in song. To glorify Him with thanksgiving. What we did is scriptural. And we should do that every day. Let's pray. Father God, we thank You this morning for Your Word, Lord. And I pray that this Word will be applied to our lives. That we will see the goodness and the thankfulness we have for You, Lord. That we will recognize the little things in lives that you've put in our paths and challenged us with. Father God, we give you the praise. We give you the glory for everything you've done for us. We pray, Lord, for this church and this community. And we pray that the words will go forth and will touch hearts and change lives. Father God, we pray that minds will be open and hearts will receive this morning your word. And that the Holy Spirit will be free to touch lives this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The psalmist says here that I will, I will. Say that with me. Say, I will <clears throat> praise God's name in song. And glorify Him. Who will we glorify? God Almighty. With thanksgiving. <coughs> thanksgiving. Last week in Sunday school, there was a question raised. We were discussing prayer. And the question was raised that sometimes I just pray and pray and pray and I feel like my prayers are bouncing off the ceiling or bouncing off the walls. They never make it out. I'm continually asking for the same thing or talking about the same thing and I don't see results. I just pray and pray and pray. And I was really impressed with what the teacher responded. The teacher said, in times like that, praise God. Thank God for the things in your life. Thank God that when you turn a light switch, <coughs> lights come on. Thank God that when you go over and adjust that thermostat, the heat comes on. Thank God when you jump in your car and turn that key, it starts. Thank God that when you get to work and you're on time, thank God Thank God in the things of this life that we take so granted for. We just take granted all this stuff. We all have things to be thankful for. Every one of us. I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify Him with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, guys, is a true mark of a children of God. They will long to magnify God with their salvation. This is a heart cry of an Old Testament saint. And now it is a longing of every true Christian. That is, do everything so that God might be magnified. Do everything so that God's word would be exalted. Paul wrote in one of his books, 
He said, it is my eager expectation and hope that I shall not be all, not at all, be ashamed, but that with full courage, now and always, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether be life or by death. I will not be ashamed of the gospel, whether I'm living, whether I'm not. Therefore, it is a mark of all God's children to magnify God the God of their salvation and His Son, Jesus Christ. It's a true mark. It's like a bullseye painted on your head. I'm going to do what's right. God's put this before me. No matter what happens, I choose to do right. Do you think people are going to notice that? Absolutely. Does it mean we can't go to the grocery store and buy groceries and conversate with people? No. But you know what it does mean? If you find a $20 bill laying in the parking lot, you give it back to the clerk, and you say, I found this in the parking lot. It means we do what's right. We do what's right. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Verses 28 through 32 on page 812 tells us this. This has been offered in sacrifice. Then do not eat it. Both for the sake of a man who told you and for conscience sake. The other man's conscience. I mean not yours. For why should my freedom be judged by another's conscience? If I take part in the meal with thankfulness, why am I denounced because of something I thank God for? So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Do not cause anyone to stumble. Whether Jew, Greek, or the church of God. Do not do anyone. Do not cause anyone to stumble. Ouch. How many has lost your temper before in front of people? Ouch. Well, he did it. Huh? Growing up. You left Lynn do it. <laughs> We've all walked that road. We've all done things and somebody's over there going. <sighs> Bible says, not for our conscience, but for someone else's. You see, at that time they were burning sacrifices. People would bring a sacrifice to the head priest. He'd burn it. It was an offering. They tossed it out back behind the tent. And people would come and eat the meat. They were hungry. And Paul says, I give thanks, Lord. So he said, no. It is a sacrifice. You don't eat it. It was given to me. You don't eat it. Friends, I sometimes think friends, spouses, know the real us. Know the real us. People you work with know the real you. People you associate with know the real you. People who you watch a football game with. Way to go, Michigan. I'm sorry. Hats off. Guys did good yesterday. <laughs> People who know the real you know how you are. But in everything, everything, we're to glorify God. Be thankful. 
for one another. 